In a previous DIY or buy episode, I showed you how to not build a capacitive discharge spot welder. So after this failed attempt, I got this, the K-Weld, which is a well-working spot welder that can be powered by a LiPo battery. Its welding energy can easily be adjusted to create the perfect weld for all thicknesses of nickel strips and thus is suitable to create DIY battery packs. But if you want more information about it, then make sure to visit its website, where we can also find out that a completed kit costs 167 euro, not including a powerful LiPo battery, which sets you back another 56 euro. That got me thinking though, whether there exists a simpler and cheaper spot welder. And what I found was this, the DIY Arduino battery spot welder. According to its schematic, it uses, obviously, an Arduino and a few interface components like an OLED and rotary encoder to set the pulse time of the welds. And then it activates a couple dozens of power MOSFETs in parallel to basically short a car battery for the length of the pulse duration to create the welds. You can even buy this project as a kit for around 130 euro. But I wanted something even simpler without using power MOSFETs as the main power switch. So in this small project, inspired by the Arduino battery spot welder, I will show you my simplified version, which costs around 90 euro and might not deliver the most consistent results, but still works well enough nevertheless. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can get 10 professional PCBs with any solder mask color you like for the low price of only $2. So feel free to upload your Gerber files today to order your PCBs from JLC PCB. The first component I got for my crude spot welder was this car battery. Its 12 volt voltage is of course standardized. And its capacity of 44 amp hours is not that important, but the next rating of 380 amps was very important, which is the cold cranking amps rating. In a nutshell, it tells us how much current the battery can output in cold conditions, and for spot welder, this value should be above 300 amps. For the remaining power electronic components, I got this big fuse holder with a fitting 200 amp fuse for safety purposes and this electromagnet battery disconnect switch, whose product page with its spelling error might not seem trustworthy, but after testing this component quite a bit, I have to say that its maximum current of 1000 amps seems to be correct. Basically put, it's a big relay which after connecting its coil to 12 volts, closes its switch, whose contacts we can then use to, for example, short the car battery and thus create a weld. The remaining mandatory components were pretty much all of those, in order to build the control electronics. As the brain, I used an Arduino Pro Mini, which outputs the currently set pulse time between 0 and 100 milliseconds on an OLED. To set the pulse time, I used a simple potentiometer, and for the last inputs, I used a foot switch, which looks just like you would imagine a foot switch to look like, and its job is to start the welding process. That means it pulls the output pin 9 high, which activates a TC4420 MOSFET driver, which then turns a MOSFET on, which then finally activates our power relay. Of course, we should not forget about complementary voltage regulators and decoupling and buffering capacitors, which you can find in the final schematic of this project. According to it, I added all components to a PCB and started soldering them to one another through solder bridges, bridge wire or thin flexible wire. As soon as the circuit was complete, I hooked up an FTDI breakout board to my computer and connected its pins to the Arduino Pro Mini, which means it was time for programming. 
For the OLEDs I used the Adafruit SSD1306 library and for the rest I pretty much only used the timer 1, the analog read function and the external interrupt 0. Here is how it works. Normally the Arduino reads in the analog voltage of the potentiometer and converts it into a pulse duration which is then displayed on the OLED. But if the foot switch is pressed, the external interrupt gets activated, which firstly turns on the pin 9 and thus the relay, which starts the welding process. At the same time the timer 1 counter gets set to 0 and the compare register 1 to a value which represents the previously set welding duration. The timer 1 counter now counts up to this compare register value and then turns off the pin 9 and thus stops the welding process. Afterwards the system returns to its normal modes. So after uploading the codes and connecting 12V power as well as the foot switch to which I had to solder wires beforehand and the relay to whose terminals I not only had to add a flyback diode but also had to crimp cable shoes to its connector wires, it was finally time for a test. For that I hooked up my oscilloscope probe to ground and the gate of the MOSFET and tried out a few different pulse times which after activating them with the foot switch always led to pretty precise on times of the MOSFETs. That means it was time for the power wire ring. So I got myself this 10 square millimeter wire and started off by adding adapters to the battery terminals. Afterwards I used a small piece of wire which I tinned on both sides beforehand in order to connect the fuse in series to the plus terminal. Then followed another shorter length of wire which connects to one side of the relay switch terminals and the fuse. And let's not forget that I had to crimp a pretty big cable shoe to the wire beforehand. Nevertheless next I connected a longer wire to the other side of the relay switch terminals from whose end I then removed the insulation. Last but not least I also added a longer wire to the minus terminal of the battery and removed its insulation at the end as well. But since those bare wires would be terrible electrodes I added tons of solder to them and then used copper nails whose head I snipped off as the main electrodes. And just like that my crude spot welder was complete and after setting its pulse time to 20 milliseconds and using two nickel strips with a thickness of 0.2 mm as test objects, it all seems to work decently well, because after the welding the nickel strips were inseparable. Even thicker nickel strips with 0.3 mm can be welded together without a problem by increasing the pulse time a bit. And of course welding those nickel strips to 18650 lithium ion batteries also worked like a charm. So all in all after 3 different attempts I finally got a functional DIY spot welder, which only cost me around 90 euro. I hope you enjoyed this video, if so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.